the boards are going to be given out this evening, which is why you didn't receive ballots on the way in. The ballots are going to be determined based on voting at your previous screenings for this film. So please do give the filmmakers all your wonderful feedback and stay tuned to see what might happen this evening. Who knows? Uh, so please join me in welcoming producers Carolyn Hepburn and Lynette Nelson. Um, I just want to acknowledge you guys as an audience. You laughed everywhere you should have laughed, you cried everywhere you should have cried, and you clapped in the best places. So, you know, props to you guys. So, I just want to start off, if you can add, if I can ask one quick question, can you talk about how you got access to these stories to, to make this film? Uh, about... Not quite two years ago, my son uh, brought this story to me, uh, and he was pretty enraged about it. And, and I guess I should say that uh, he he was a mouthy 17-year-old at one point. Um, and I contacted Mark Silver, the director, and he said he was on board if I could get access to the family. And I uh, wrote Ron Davis a letter, and. Um, uh, it was, to me, very critical that I acknowledge a couple of things up front. And one, uh, I'm not black. Um, and so therefore, I could never know what that experience was in sending kids out into the world. Um, secondarily, I, I don't know the pain of losing a child. I have no clue. And um, he called me 24 hours later. And then, uh, probably a few weeks later, we met in Florida. Mark flew in from London. And we started filming. And I have to say that uh, we'll know these people for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much, all of you, for this very moving um, yet one more story of a black youth killed. But I see participant media on a lot of social justice kinds of documentaries, and I want to know at what point they came in, how you got to them, and what did it mean to the project. Uh, our film was um, invited to participate in a, a film pitching event called The Good Pitch, which happened in New York, which I believe was in June, yeah, June of uh, 2014. And um, Diana Weirman from Participant Media was invited um, to our table. And um, that was really when the interest kind of really sparked with participant. Um, our executive producers are kind of, Diane knew about the story that we were making the film because our executive producers are good friends of hers and so they, uh, they were telling her kind of about the film. And then when we were at Big Pitch and she saw our trailer and it was the first time we really kind of had a public showing of anything in regards to our film. Um, she was just so moved and um, um, let's hear it for them that they do get yeah. involved in all these social so justice things. Yeah. So you know, so somebody's got to. Somebody has to. And that's, that's kind of how their involvement got sparked, was from the good pitch. Probably 
retail five or six, and they stop to get more. So, you know, I wasn't, you know, it's clear to me that that was a huge part of it, that he was looking for trouble. I'm really, you know, so happy about the outcome without that, but was it part of the trial? Uh, there's been a lot of speculation on that. I, I hate to offer my conjecture, but, you know, I know I'd be pretty knockered with that kind of alcohol in me, um, so I suspect he was pretty far gone, um, but I don't know if it had to do with his decision to run or to wait till the next, well, he didn't even turn himself in the next day, he was arrested at his house. Um, you know, there's a thousand ways that we could have made him even uh, more repugnant, but he did pretty well on his own. <laughs> No, it was not. Well, they, there were a couple of questions. You know, you saw the scene when Ron DeBrower was on the stand. They were asking how many drinks. Um, but they didn't make, I don't think they made that. They asked, they asked her how many he had had, how many she had had. Um, and um, they brought out a little styrofoam coffee cup to, you know, to sort of get, get a bearing on how much a glass bowl was at the wedding. and. Not much was made out of it, truthfully. Thank you. Did you have an opportunity to uh, interview Mr. Dunn? Did you have an opportunity to interview Mr. Dunn? Um, we broached it through his attorney. Um, I approached his parents, his daughter, who showed up for one day of trial. His parents sat there through the rest. I'm sorry about this, but really those lights. Um, <laughs> And we did interview Corey Strola at length, and um, who um, served it up on a platter, wouldn't you say, Leah? I'd say he was pretty remarkable himself. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we all wanted to go home and take a shower. Um, but, and so we tendered the offer um, to interview any or all of them, and um, they turned it down. Was it a conscious choice not to tie the film back to current lawmakers who, whether explicitly or tacitly, continue to support in Florida stand your ground? Uh, because the conversation moving forward isn't about one person being guilty or innocent, but it's about why does it continue to happen and why does it not get overturned? And there was no mention of any lawmakers today who continue to support this law. Um, and it felt like they get an easy pass because we don't talk about them, we just talk about them. <coughs> well, it's, you know, it's, um, it's very tricky kind of how stand your ground laws get into place in the first uh, place. You know, it's, it's heavily backed by the NRA, and um, it's usually passed when people aren't paying attention. It's passed, you know, during midterm elections, it's not during major elections. Um, um, also, you know, Alec, I would, you know, yeah. if you all are not familiar with an organization called Alec, they're, yeah. they're having direct impact on your lives. ALEC, you might want to just Google them. Has any gone to the Supreme Court? No. 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 Yes, Did you attempt to speak to any of the jurors from the first trial or find out what happened in the jury room? Uh, we did attempt to talk to them, and um, the prosecution had said that should any come forward wanting to talk, but um, what they told us was that with an, um, an unpopular decision, an unpopular um, verdict, that they tend to just want to not, not come forward. Um, first, I have a comment and a question, and I thank you for the film, but I'm I, for one, want to stop having to see these fucking films because we change the whole world and where black lives actually matter. So, <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you guys, as the filmmakers, how you felt finishing this film when finally people have stood up and started to pay attention to the countless murders of black and brown youth, from Michael Brown to John Crawford to, I could sit here and name too many names. So in working on it, how did you feel the urgency of making this film? I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're going through this film and it's heartbreaking. And, you know, while we were making the film, Ferguson happened, and, you know, we, we, Eric <coughs> and Tamir Rice, you know, just over and over and over again. And, you know, 
we had we were kind of like, what do we do? Do we cover all these cases? Do we go to Ferguson? Do we, you know, um, we we talked about it a lot about how this to incorporate it into the story, and we ultimately decided that Jordan's story was kind of just strong enough to stand on its own legs, and you know, and present it and not get, you know, it's so indicative of what's going on in our country, and you know, we wanted a, just a very clear story. So, but you know, it. it that's, I'm glad this film's coming out now after all these months of all these events happening, you know, because people, I don't know if people still realize how vulnerable our, you know, the, the black, young black men are in our country. And, you know, it, it, it just needs to stop. It just needs to stop. Um, also, I, I'm just also going to say, that this was produced in record time for a documentary. So if you think we were, you know, just waiting for things to develop, oh, yeah. we understood there was urgency. And I just want to say, um, sitting in the courtroom and watching this unfold, you know, you have two different hats on mm -hmm. there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. So I just say, sitting in the courtroom and watching all of this unfold, you have two different hats on. You're working, but then there's this other side of you that's incredibly open and human and vulnerable and watching people spin up out the value of someone else's life. And one of the shots that I didn't even remember when we were going um, to court with Lucy one day, I didn't remember that that's what she specifically had said, um, that it's like telling a race of people that their lives just don't matter. And so now, a year later, to have that be the thing that is the phrase, it is so symbolic and it is so deep and it is so pure and it is so personal. You have, we have to move forward. We just have to. Um, 